Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Black Hollywood. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. After being shut out of many mainstream opportunities in the past, African-American actors, directors, producers, and writers are now breaking barriers. In every field, black creative talent is finding new avenues to entertain, inform, and uplift all of us. But is everyone getting a seat at the table? The late Sidney Poitier was the first black actor to win an Academy Award in 1963 for Lilies of the Field. The Bahamian American star is only one of four black men in the entire history of the Academy to receive an Oscar. The others are Denzel Washington for Training Day, Jamie Foxx for Ray, and Forrest Whitaker for The Last King of Scotland. Clayton Davis interviewed Denzel Washington for a variety cover story. He has always been someone that is real. He's not tabloids, he's not social media, he's about work. He's like, he loves his craft and he does it for the love of it. The full diversity of the African-American experience was missing from the small and big screen, but no longer. In the Amazon Prime series Bosch, Jamie Hector plays LAPD detective Jerry Edgar on the other side of the law from his first role as drug kingpin Marlo Stanfield in HBO's The Wire. He shares this advice. Nurture your relationships, right? Take it step by step, move slow. Um, and appreciate every moment. Godfather of Harlem executive producer Marquand Smith worked for 18 years to make his hit epic series starring Forrest Whitaker a reality. He says labels like Black Hollywood can be limiting. I absolutely um, understand why people say Black Hollywood, but it's kind of like a gift and a curse. It's like, it's almost like us versus them, you know? I mean, I'm a creator, I love all types of art. After the 2018 black directed and performed Black Panther film generated well over a billion dollars in revenue, some doors swung wide open. We'd see uh, black talent uh, stepping into screenwriting, producing, uh, directing, uh, film editing, you know, they, they want all hands on deck approach because it makes you more competitive. There's a lot to this. Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me is Marquand Smith. He's the executive producer of the Godfather of Harlem series. He's also an actor in it as well. Um, Marquand, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Lisa. We, we appreciate it. Also with us is Jamie Hector. He is an actor. You've seen him in many, many series and many shows. Um, first and foremost was The Wire that a lot of people first got introduced to Jamie's work. You've seen him in Bosch. You've seen him in Queen of the South. And uh, he's joining us in, right now. Jamie, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Thank you. Also with us is Clayton Davis. He's the awards editor for Variety. He's also co-host of the show, The Take. He recently had the first Variety cover story interview with Denzel Washington, and he's joining us from Los Angeles. Clayton, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Clayton, I want to start with you on this. When you, you look at where we're at, because you've always, in the context of the work that you've done in the quote unquote mainstream media, also looked at different representation of various groups, whether people of color, women, whatever. What do, where do you see us at right now? Uh, I see progress being made. However, you know, we're not where we need to be and the, the train is moving very slowly. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of um, progress and, and records shattered. Like at the last year's Academy Awards, we had the most people of color ever nominated in the acting categories was nine out of 20. And that, that was when we were all home and there was no, uh, you know, parties or events going on to really campaign. So it was probably the most pure Academy Awards that we ever saw in terms of like, it was really about the performances and the movies. But where we need to do major work is not to silo uh, people of color uh, at studios and networks into these diversity bubbles, like this department that oversees uh diversity and inclusion because what that does it puts a wall it's it's you guys doing that stuff over there and i can still continue to do what i've always done for the last hundreds of years right in this uh department when i need you i can call you over so there is progress but we are not where we need to be yet i am hopeful we'll get there soon jamie from your from your acting career when we first got to know you with the wire you were acting before that of course but what do you see happening for the types of roles that you're offered, that you're interested in, that you see there? I'm sure you get pitched through your agent a lot of different projects. What do you see happening right now? Well, I see young creatives actually coming through the pipe and um, getting opportunities to help provide a space for us to create something great. So when I started out, there was a point 
that Obama, the one, became president. And once that happened, the floodgates opened up for me with opportunities of being able to see a man in a position that's not just um, on a corner hustling, right? Obama was the president of the United States of America, so the doors opened. But as soon as he became president and then he left office, things began to slow down again. And what I would like to constantly see is the momentum just continue to grow because creatives exist. Like we're here to stay. And there's so many people that are creating in so many ways, like Lena Waithe and, and Michael B. Jordan's new company. And um, there's so many people that's creating and so many young actors coming through Pike. I just want to make sure that there's enough content out there for them to actually continue to develop this talents and abilities. And, and enough, uh, enough opportunities as well. Marquan, first of all, congratulations for, the, for all the Image Award nominations that you have for Godfather of Harlem. That's really awesome. So congratulations on that. Thank you. D tell, us, tell us about how you got to be where you are because you have this hot series. You're the executive producer. You're also one of the characters, Junie Bird in there. Um, how did you get to that point to be able to executive produce a highly successful series on a major platform? Well, I mean, it started almost 18 years ago and I, I've always had a, a, a vision of, you know, myself and Jamie always talked about it. You know, I have to give uh, the roses flowers to Jamie because Jamie was one of the first individuals that welcomed me into his circle, into the industry. And um, I always say to myself that you have to create your own lane. You know, sometimes it's not about going to the, 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 uh, the cattle calls and hoping that your agent sees what's on uh on the breakdowns and things of that sort, you know, you're, you, you're a creator, you, you can create content. And one of the things I've always wanted to do was create a project that was celebrated and not tolerated. And uh, Godfather Harlem was a project that was dear to me, uh, it was from my godmother, Margaret Johnson, who's no longer here. And she used to tell me these magical stories of Harlem, how she used to walk outside and smell fresh laundry hanging out of the tenement window, or walk past the barbershop, he looks inside and may see, uh, Nats and Cole waiting to get a haircut or Sugar Ray Robinson uh, in, in his establishment or walk past the 125th Street and see James Brown's name on the marquee. So it was all these magical stories. And I made her a promise 18 years ago that I would go out there and uh, make it happen. But um, it wasn't an easy job because uh, Hollywood, the only thing they care about is their ROI, their return on investment. They, they're not really, it's not really about the project. You can have the greatest content ever, but they want to know what it is they're getting back you know, what, what's the ROI, what's their return on investment. So it was a long journey and I just had to believe in myself. There's much more to come. Stay with us. Clayton, tell us about Denzel Washington because part of Hollywood, the question to all of you guys is, you know, when, you, when they're casting, when they're casting a, a film role or whatever, there's always a very specific d description from the person's height, the, the body type, the skin tone, the, you know, ethnicity, gender, all of these types, types of things. How did Denzel Washington and his career, do you think, manage to emerge, you know, beyond that, especially at a time when he was one of very, very few Black actors? Yeah, Denzel Washington has been uh, a trailblazer and the pinnacle of, of Black success in Hollywood. And that was also started before him by legends like Sidney Poitier, who we just lost. He was the first Black man ever nominated for an Oscar and first Black man to win the lead Oscar. And it took 50 years to get from Sidney to Denzel holding a statue on that stage. But one thing that Denzel has also provided is this constant comparison in Hollywood. When you're a Black actor or a Black creative, labeling the next Denzel and Hollywood's obsession with just that only stereotype, but they don't do that for any other uh, creatives. Like, no one's saying the next Brad Pitt, the next Martin Scorsese, and people do, but at, at nauseum, anyone who comes up in this industry or trying to make it in this industry, and if they're Black, they get that comparison. Denzel has done so much for the community. He's producing, he's, he's acting, you know, like he produced and, I'm sorry, he directed and acted two uh, projects last year, unheard of uh, for Black creatives at major studios, you know, with, with um, Apple original films with Tragedy of Macbeth, and then directing a journal for Jordan for Sony Pictures. So he's, he's 
again, that pinnacle of success, but we need more like him at, at, you know, at the table doing those types of things. No, definitely. Jamie, in terms of stereo, tell us about your experience or your perspective on, on stereotypes in acting roles. You know, when, um, I, what I kind of realize is when some writers are like, they don't have knowledge of a culture, they tend to try to put you in a box and stereotype you. And I feel like as an actor, as the actor, you have to come in and again, shatter it, right? So what they expect is not what they get. So if you choose, if we choose as an actor to go in there and play it the way that they think that we should play it is one thing, but being that we really know the answer, I think the confidence is to stick to the key of what you know the answer to be. If you're gonna play um, anyone that, let's just say for instance, a, a, a bad guy, right? And they have their minds wrapped around what a bad guy might be. I feel like the goal is to go in there and express it the way that you know the truth is and then have them come around to you. Um, because that's really important because if, if, if they're too lazy to do the work and go find out exactly how each culture or everybody exists within their culture in order to not stereotype them, then what ends up happening is you start seeing the same formula and the same um, character, caricature on TV so, or on film. So my experience with that has been just to, you know, get in there and just break the stereotype, right? And just like, um, this is what I would do. And the fun part about being at the stage that I'm at is that um, it's respected. So what I bring is respected and appreciated. Um, and the boldness for the young actors coming up is to just do that. Jamie, you founded an organization called Moving Mountains because you wanted to have young people, particularly from communities of color, be exposed to the idea that you don't just have to be the star of a show or the star of a film, but that there's a real industry here that where there's real jobs that, that you can have. Tell, tell us what made you want to do that. Well, it's what Clayton and Marquand said earlier on. We started Moving Mountains in, um, 15 years ago to leave the door open, to leave the light on. Right. Basically, we make it through. We want to make sure that everyone understands that opportunities do exist. And we those that made it, myself and others included, will try to lay the groundwork for, you, for it to be a little bit easier for you guys. Right. So um, so we just basically decided to start this organization that teaches um, drama, dance, vocal, cinematography, et cetera. But one thing that we found important was this is a business. So we also now incorporated entrepreneurship and stocks, NFTs, and Bitcoin. And these are classes that are being taught as well, only because you can get into the business, understand art, love the art, love the creative process. But if you can't manage your money, if you don't understand the percentages that go out and how to flip your money also, and stay passionate about the work, then you can lose yourself. So we just try to basically balance it out in those ways for the young artists that are coming up. Marquand, what about the uh, what about the jobs that are available and the, and the opportunities on on that front for people? Yeah, there's uh, it's like what Jamie said. This is a business. I mean, the uh, I think the most surreal thing that ever happened to me was when a teamster walked up to me and said, "Um, thank you for never giving up on your dreams because you provided uh, you made a you you provided me to be able to feed my family for the next six months." And there's so many jobs on set from gaffers to best boys to uh set dresses and things of that sort and you know i mean pas are like you know I, I i try to reach out and give people offer people jobs just to learn from the bottom up so you can take that skill and move from uh one set to another set because you know this is a business this is a big business no definitely clayton what about you always have your eye on who's hot right now and but also like who's up next and and that type of thing what, what, what do you see happening give us a sense in terms of of the actual creativity level of like what what you see happening uh one thing we're seeing is a big boom uh not just within the black community but specifically with black women they are really taking ownership of their own voices in the business and what the, and the stories that they want to tell you know Halle Berry famously still only the only black woman to ever win Best Actress 20 years ago, uh, had to give herself a substantial role or in order to give herself that, she had to direct a movie and direct her own movie, directed herself and Bruce made her directorial debut this year. But one thing that Mark Juan and Jamie, it was as music to my ears, when I talk about representation and a, a lot of this gets lost in translation among all of us that are talking about it, is the educational aspect. The true 
beacon of representation I want to see. What happens when you walk into a community of color, to an under, uh, underserved community, and you go to a five-year-old kid and you tell them what a cinematographer is. You show them what a boom mic is, right? What happens to that kid? And you stay with them all throughout elementary and high school. What happens when that kid turns 18? Do we have a Spielberg there? Because that's what happens. You know, there's on this job and Marquan and Jamie are doing great, you know, inviting those people into the fray. I even came into this business by accident. You know, it wasn't like on my agenda because I didn't know, you know, all we can do is what we see. Jamie, in, ter in terms of acting, I mean, we have a we we see a lot of young men. They want to be athletes. They want to be, you know, rappers. They want to be, you know, or business moguls, whatever. How did you get? Tell us how you got involved in acting. Hmm. A lot of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, because it's not easy. You know, it's very difficult. Um, part of a theater company at a young age, and then um, just continue to pursue uh, this journey where you know less than four four percent actors work that were making their way to california right so you have a huge percentage that were going to california to work when the studios were only in california and less than four percent were working so then you're basically saying you're getting yourself into a, a career that you might not even win at um how did i get into it um because I had people that believed in me, I believed in myself, and I really honed my craft, right? I really, really went out there and trained and tried to throw, the, throw everything up against the wall, you name it, theater companies, um, conservatories, constantly just trying to work and plant seeds at the same time. And that's very important just to understand that, you know, relationships are the network of life. So you build those relationships and you just make sure you don't lose that gusto to just continue to do the work that you need to do. Marquand, what about what about you? How did you like you said you've been working to get Godfather of Harlem going for 18 yeah. years, but it's like you have to support yourself in the meantime. You know what, uh, Lisa, that's interesting because um, people look at my breakthrough and don't look what I've been through. And I tell people all the time that there's so many people out there that want success, but how many people want to eat tuna fish sandwiches? <laughs> how many people want to humble themselves and sleep on somebody's floor because they can't afford a hotel? How many people are asking for a buddy pass to get out of New York on Sunday, knowing that they have a meeting at Netflix Monday morning. You know, people want success, but are they really willing to go get success? You know, my career wasn't a microwave career. It was rotisserie, it was slow cooked gumbo. And uh, Jamie will tell you, I mean, I've, I've got turned down a thousand times. I got a thousand no's before I got, before I got one yes. And um, you just have to believe in yourself, man. That's the first thing, believe in yourself. And when you make it there, keep creating because you haven't really made it because someone is always creating you know yes you know every season we look for we like we're waiting uh did the network pick it up did the network pick it up because you don't want to be the one that had that show you want to be the one that's still having that show and your job keeps moving and moving and moving and being great so it's all about creating great content and believing in yourself and not let not letting anybody be a dream killer Clayton, in terms of the in terms of the content you see being created now and coming coming out now, do you see any trends or do you see anything happening? Because it does it does seem like there's also more more uh, multiracial shows, multi ethnic shows, and programs and films coming out. Is is that a, is that progress? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I I see a really good trend happening right now. Is as you know, it's not just black. Uh, voices coming to the table you know indigenous people are finally getting their 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 shot at you know at goal you know latino voices are are, are trying to you know have this right. big breakthrough you know and, and what, what's great the the most progressive thing i see happening especially within the black community is our the stories being told isn't just using the crutch of slavery or racism one of my favorite films of the last decade is If Beale Street Could Talk by Barry Jenkins, because it was a story about black love and just being black. Like it was like it, it, it didn't it didn't rest on the on 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 something so, you know, that had us in bondage or something so, you know, agonizing. It was about love, you know, and we need more stories like that. Like Jordan Peele with us, that was a movie that could have, we call it a uh, ca uh, blind casting, you know, that could have been a white family just as easily as it was a black family. And that's what we want to see, you know, we just, that's a representation, just, a, it can be anything you want it to be, just have it reflect the world. And that's, that's a really good uh, move in that direction. We're not, again, we're not all the way there, 
but uh, especially with, with black women telling their stories now, I mean, like Ava DuVernay started a company so she could get more voices to the table because, you know, you, you're not always guaranteed that follow up once you even get that first shot. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Black Hollywood. Share it and watch it again on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. I'm Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. Let's push for peace, love and justice for all.